Oh, and yes, Arnie voices... Oh, and yes, Arnie voices a character in the game, but it's so fucking phoned in, he might have actually done it over the fucking phone, whilst, you know, half a fucking sleep or something. Half the time, the stuff he says doesn't even make sense, as for the communication years. Plus, several of the lines are from T3, you know. Some good points. You do get to use those things, you know, in the first Terminator movie, they have this grenade sort of thing that, you know, they twist this handle and then they throw it under the tank treads. It doesn't look entirely the way it should, but here it works as a proximity mine and that makes pretty good sense. And I can't deny that the miniguns in the game are fun to use, but it's practically impossible to make such a thing not fun. The vehicles are okay, but they're kind of the same and sometimes the driving is pretty shitty. Also, this just fucks up the way that most games like this do. The robot side doesn't have a particular advantage from being a robot other than, you know, armor and maybe weaponry. You know, they don't scan, they don't have x-ray vision or anything. Some of the levels are pretty good, and I'm not gonna lie, I enjoy playing the game, and I bought it knowing it was pretty shit because I had played the demo. It was on sale, don't worry. The only reason I was willing to pay any money for this was that I'm such a big fucking fan of the first one. And, at its best, this does capture the future war, you know, the bleakness. You get to run around post-apocalyptic LA, and you can shoot down flying HKs, although you can even finish it off with, you know, the fucking pistol. Also, who the fuck brings a Desert Eagle into combat like that? Yes, it packs a punch, but you can't use it over any kind of distance. Also. Can somebody please clue me in on how the fuck you call in reinforcements or air support or whatever it is? I mean, I'm playing as the fucking supply terminator. I'm underneath it. The HUD is blinking. And that's it. I don't, you know, I can press every single key on the fucking keyboard and nothing seems to happen. Anyway, that was it. So, on to the show. Now, maybe... Now, maybe you chose to not watch the show. Maybe you were worried that they'd fuck around with it. Or that they'd make a joke out of the concept like T3 did. I can't promise you you'll love it. But I gotta say I enjoyed the crap out of it. The pilot is a fairly good test. If you watch that, you'll pretty much know what the show is like. And based on your reaction to it, if you're gonna like it or not. What I will say is that it expands upon the first two movies quite nicely, even if it does occasionally retread stuff from them. But the mythology, the characters, the music, the guns, they clearly paid a lot of attention to the first two movies. And I would say they genuinely go to some interesting places, even if they do get going with a little too many plot threads. Also, do notice as I'm recording this, the show has, and the second season finale is not a proper show finale. You know, they were expecting to get a third season. Finally, I'm just going to tell you that, don't worry, the action is really cool, and there's plenty of human-on-human -human fights, robot-on-human -human fights, and robot-on-robot -robot fights. Okay, so that was it for the spoiler-free portion of me talking about one of the shows that has the longest title in the fucking history of television. I like how much respect they pay to the movies, especially the second one, but I do think that the level of admiration for the movies, especially the second one, kind of got to the point where it feels like the show is, you know, T2's fluffer. You know what I mean? It's so entranced by T2's cock that it's content to stroke it rather than pulling out its own. I'd maybe compare it somewhat to Prison Break, you know, trying to be clever and pretty fast-paced, largely works, and good characters. They once again fuck around with the characters' ages, partially to make sure that Sarah Connor could be, you know, hot. Is it just me or does Lena Headey always play a strong woman? With that said, I'm not complaining. Cameron herself is pretty fucking hot too, and I like that they let Summer Glau use her agility. She's a really cool Terminator too, I think. Between Glau and Dillahunt, this is kind of the show that t 
took over for the 4400. I wonder what's gonna take over now that this show's gone. I do kind of wish they didn't have to go to the well on someone doing something stupid as many times as they fucking did, because a lot of the plot seemed to rely on, I'm gonna go do this and then, you know, even though everybody knows that's the stupid thing to do. As far as the guest stars that are, you know, from the movies go, none of them look at all like the people they're playing, like their counterparts from the two movies. Maybe the worst is Carlos. He just completely different. Although having the senator take over for Earl Bowen is also pretty jarring. And that is not Kyle fucking Reese. You can have him recite lines from the first movie as much as you like, it's still not him. The dialogue tends to try to be clever and sometimes it doesn't quite get there. When this uses, like, famous portions of text or music, it's a bit mixed and the same goes for the use of slow motion or skip frames. I gotta say, both the pilot and the season 2 opener pretty much hooked me in right away. At its best, it's very tense and exciting, with several hot babes. The chases, vehicular and otherwise, fights with great choreography, and shootouts tend to be pretty good. I would say that the action in this is really, really good most of the time. The police station shootout remake was pretty stupid, though. It was cool to see Cameron with, you know, half the face gone, sort of. The product placement seemed to be a bit shameless at times. Were those really toys that John Henry was sitting there with? I mean, seriously, that's an even more obvious plug than should have gone with Sprint. Dale Hunt manages to be really creepy and innocent, sort of. I'd also say that the younger cast members in this tend to be not that annoying. And that's, and that's really rare today. Please stop showing us that photo that is so not the photo of Sarah from the first movie. Did they maybe spend too much time the first season building up that Cromartie was coming back? In the second season, you know, I don't know, every third episode or something had a new Terminator coming anyway, and then had them destroying it, which really kind of makes it seem like they're not that tough. The shootout at the end of the first season was not bad, but a pool, seriously. I think that may be the least impressive thing for a corpse to do, to fall into a pool. Judging from the commentaries, they seem to have fun making the show. And the featurettes tended to be pretty good. That flying HK at the end of season 2 was pretty cool, but when you stop and think about it, why the fuck did it just fly in there? Does it not have any weapons? Was it just banking on, I don't know, either Weaver not being there or her not doing anything? It was a pretty good twist that she's apparently working against Skynet. Though I guess she's still a bit suspect because she did kill a ton of people when that plant thing was shutting down. That seemed to be people working for her. I don't know, maybe just the Terminator, I'm gonna kill who's in my way kind of thing. I kind of like Cameron, I should have killed him. Can I please kill him? About Ellison. Isn't it funny how it's called salvation and it doesn't salvage a fucking thing? In fact, it just does disservice to the franchise, same as the third one. What was the bitch line at the end of season 2 about? Why would Sarah be a bitch? I gotta admit, personally, I hated the Christian themes. I think this did pretty good at being, you know, self-ironic over the Terminators too. Is your soul sleepy? I wouldn't have expected Garbage's lead singer to make a good Terminator, but she did. I personally thought that Derek's death was way too fucking blasé until I saw him, you know, being there in the future. Personally, I think that if they do get a third season, the perfect way to open it would be for Kyle Reese to look deep into John Connor's eyes and say from, from the bottom of his heart, you son of a bitch, that's my coat, and slug him. What, too cynical? Anyway, that was the Terminator franchise. Hope you enjoyed it. I sure as hell did. See you next time.